Smokey, ragamuffins. Back again. Back again. Last time I stood in here was 1995. 1990. Yeah. That was that. That was the last night. That was the last night. The last night. And you were the DJ on the last night, or was there quite a few of you? There was quite a few DJs came in that evening. I didn't really do much that evening. I just wanted to go and have a drink and socialise with everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I think the pressure was too much. <laughs> Brilliant so, night, though. So talk to us, what was it like being a DJ at rag, Rags back, back in the day? I was amazing for any DJs that worked here because it was so friendly. I remember my audition in 1983 down in the Riches Room. Yeah. Um, I was good enough to join the fold, as they say. Uh, fantastic DJs, you know, Kevin A, Dale Summers, Barry Winters, Chris St. John, real icons in their field of entertainment. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I started coming to Rags when I was 16. Uh, <laughs> Youngster then. <laughs> Youngster back in the day, yeah, because yeah. they didn't, obviously they didn't ID people. It was just how you looked more than anything else. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and I always remember you joined the queue downstairs. You did. You do it, and the bouncers were there. Yeah. Big, big blokes they were. Yeah. Um, and they would let people in, obviously counting as they went with their little clickers. They did, yeah. yeah. Their little, little clickers and up the yeah. stairs. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you had obviously the riches room. Yep. which was the first room. That was normally for private hire and things like that, yeah, wasn't it? Which room was brilliant because, yeah, you could have a private hire or you could extend it from the part up here. Because if you got so busy, mm. then we'd open up both bars. Um, which is room, yeah, lovely DJing in there. You could have your own party. On one occasion, we mic'd up the DJ here down to the stairs as well. So <laughs> it was amazing. You could tell each other what they'd played and what not to play. Oh, right, okay. Um, Christmas Eve, we did that. Yeah, great fun. Brilliant times. So on, uh, and then obviously the main room, which is mm. the rags room, every, everyone remembers it. But it looks so different now. That, you know, the, there's no blackout. Cleaner. Up. Is it cleaner? <laughs> no, no. It's, your feet aren't no. sticking to the floor either, I've noticed. <laughs> oh, so, goodness um, me. Yeah, back in the day, DJs here, they were mm. not necessarily superstars, but you, you were quite famous. People would come to your nights. They, they thought, all oh, right, okay, Keith's playing tonight. It's going to be some good party music. Yeah, lots of shouting down the microphone. Yeah. Uh, wh what sort of things did you get up to? You know, being being the well, in truth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, the the owners were here. Uh, they were um, watching what you were doing, and you were just having fun. You were encouraging people to to get on the dance floor. Yeah. To, and, and you said that uh, there was a couple of tables which were reserved for the the DJ's friends. Friends which were, behind all the reserved there. Yeah. Uh, so you used to go up to little tricks. Uh, one of one of them was uh, doing a. Um, a, a uh, a little train going through the office. Yes, um, we did a love train, which everybody knows. So I sent everybody out the back of the building, down the stairs outside, back in through Ian and Dennis's offices. So we're talking like probably 300 people doing this chain. Um, goodness me, there was no health and safety <laughs> then. And I can remember the phone ringing, which was here, uh, saying, you know, Connors, Connors, you can't do this. This is illegal. Well, it's too late. We've already done it. <laughs> Yeah, a little dance on the dance floor. DJs never dance, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> except, except Chris and John, he was a good DJ. He yeah, was actually good. DJ dances like that in, in the yeah, booth. Yes, that's, yeah. that's, that's, about, that's about that's it. Right. Yeah, I know. It's like we've got the face for radio. We haven't got the face for dancing. <laughs> <laughs> so the, da the dance floor, yeah. the, the major part of rags. I mean, it doesn't look that good now, but back in the day, yeah, this was a hive of activity. And we've been joined by Rhoda. Hello, Rhoda, Hi. who Hi. is a member of the Square staff. And basically, she used to come here. Yes. I, mean, I used to come here, you used to come here. You worked here. Mm -hmm. So do, have you got any fond memories of this place? Uh, I remember it being very, very dark and having to queue an awful long time to get in. And after that, you just came and parted, and that was it. Yeah, you did. Queue yeah. to get to the bar, loads of drinks, and just had a really great night. And that's actually, yes. I do remember being ill the following morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As many others. <laughs> Others did as well, <laughs> but uh, uh, the thing is, uh, being being female, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you was in the queue, and, and the bouncer were going, "Yeah, you can go in, you can go in, you can go." No, not you, not you, not you. And it'd be all the girls would get to go in first, and all the blokes would be standing outside going, "I want to go in, I want to go in, I want to go in." Yeah. So Sounds and like whereas whereas Keith here was up here, you know, he had the the pick of the crop, and he was. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really bad. It does, no. I know. But the thing is, though. It, a, a DJ's life. I mean, I used to be a DJ as well. A DJ's life it seems to be very glamorous, but it's not always very glamorous, is it? You know, when things go wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have anything go wrong here majorly at all? Or would it, was it every night was as smooth as silk? Some nights were harder than others. You know, obviously most nights were busy. If you wasn't busy, then you really had to pull out. 
the ideas and things to do with the people. Competition's always good fun. Music's obviously priority. But people just kept coming back and back. But trends changed. Yeah. And as the years went on, the trends changed. And I think getting nearer to the end, I think the owners thought we've done our 20 years. We're not going to do another era. I think we had the best. I mean, I was here from 83, so 80s, 90s for me. Other DJs, late 70s, 73, or 74 onwards, sorry, 75, but brilliant times. I'd have it all again, <laughs> yeah, especially taking the years off, I would. I mean, you say with the 70s, obviously the, the music, you had disco in the 70s. Mm. The 80s, you had electronic come in. Yeah. Um, and there was a massive great change with the 80s because mm. you had the, the end of um, well, like um, um, rock, Motown and things like that. You had punk coming in, mm. you know, uh, you went into electronic and then obviously you went out the other end with like Spandau Ballet. So you had, you know, you had all of that sort did, of yeah. your romantic yeah. state. So the yeah. 80s was a big change and obviously you guys were trying to follow it. Goodness, what a mix and mash up that was. <laughs> You'd go from soul music to probably Duran Duran. But I think that was a Thursday night particularly because that was the hen nights. So obviously all the fellows thought great. So that was one of the busiest nights of the week for years. But the music here is sort of, it's a bit poppy, soul-y. Tuesday nights, that was more soul, R&B, hip-hop, younger generation. But other than that, it was, it was such a mixture. There was no defining sound to rags. It was just out there. It was just you know, whatever music people wanted to hear. Did you ever play a track and like the dance floor would just go, shh, you yeah. know, everyone would clear. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I mean, not completely, but you knew. You just had that instinct thinking, that's not working. Yeah. <laughs> But when I first worked here, the DJs, fantastic people, they had in like an induction period, of, which I didn't know about. So what they used to do, so I'd be DJing, and one of the DJs, Chris St. John, notoriously funny, but he took one of the turntable platters away while I was looking at my vinyl. So I had to DJ, put the vinyl track on, talk, get it off, put another one on while I'm talking. So this lasted for about 10 minutes, and he's hiding behind the booth with the deck. But because I laughed it off, you know. You were, you were in. You I were was in, in the you family, were, yeah. You were in the I family. In, yeah. You were part, part yeah. of the crowd. Yeah. So, and, you know, you used to play tricks on each other and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. Yeah. And when you've got like 200, 300 people in here. And, and five it goes, or six sometimes. Five or six yeah, hundred. And it goes so. quiet. It's that deathly silence. It's like a DJ sort of, you know, it's it, that. It never would with that amount of people. It was just too busy. Probably the, the other nights where it dropped a bit, you would have a little bit of sparseness, but you've got a skill bringing them back in. You know, you just keep yeah. playing music. Get the crowd singing. Exactly, Get yeah. the crowd singing. Interaction. Yeah. You know, which you probably did when you were here as well. Yeah, always. Good to, always, yeah. always out for good times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was brilliant times. As I said, <laughs> we'd have it all again. I mean, the effects, uh, you, there, was no, there was no lasers, there was no... All you had was fog machines and light bulbs, basically, wasn't that? Pretty much, yeah. And this yeah. stuff... The old yeah. UV, UV paint, uh, the old UV tubes. Yeah, once the UV light's on, everything comes to life. Even people wearing white tops, you think, oh, oh yes. my goodness. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll always remember some of the, the women, I don't know what they put on their face, they would glow in the white, in the dark, it would glow white. <laughs> well, like your dandruff Halloween. would show up as well, you know. Yeah, it's like Halloween night all over well, it's again. Well, good job it's not on now. I mean, your hair would stand out oh, like, like a dream, me. wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, I am blessed with hair, that's for a fact, but... So you got, I mean, so yeah. lighting wise, it was, it wasn't, it was just uh, bulbs and, you know, uh, and things like that. Yeah. And mm. a smoke machine. Yes, yeah, smoke machine, no LEDs in, you know, it's pure bulbs, hundreds of bulbs in the ceiling. Uh, twisters were good. I think it was, I um, can't remember the make now, but they came out, which were good to have. Probably Martin's. Seat. It was, Martin <laughs> Twisters. See, he's a DJ. Yeah, I know. I do. <laughs> um, but I think the main thing is the club kept going for so many years. It, there is an endearment to ragamuffins, isn't there, from yeah. people in Camberley. Uh, and then we had competition in Pantels, too posh for me to work at. Never did get a job there. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't part of that London set, though, were you? No. Pantels was set up for the Londoners coming yeah, down on the A30. Pretty much, yeah. You know, so, and, and like you say, the, mm. this, this was for the everyday person. That was, like... You know, it was, yeah. Something special, really, the, uh, yeah. the old Pantel's barn. Good so, family club. Yes, yeah. I, I mean, did, did you sort of like, did you go there? Did you check out the, uh, 
the competition at any point? Well, I never really had time. I was here working so many nights here and in the daytime, but I did go to Pantels a couple of occasions. Um, that's a good club. You know, totally different atmosphere completely to what you would get here. Yeah. Fleet Country Club, I only worked there a couple of nights. I think it was more like Ron Pullinger. He was a good DJ and he's still going. Fleet Country Club was good. What about what, what about the other club, in, the, the Agincourt? I mean, that's obviously known as a rock club now, but it didn't start yeah. off as a rock club. I mean, that was owned by Bob Potter it back was. in the day, funny yeah. enough. And, yeah. and so, you know, you had that, I mean, Dusty Springfield and that played mm. there. Mm. Uh, so it, obviously now it's a rock club, but back mm. in the day, it must have been just a normal nightclub, wasn't it? It was in the late 70s when I first started going. That's where I, I saw Chris and John, good DJ. Kevin A is another good DJ. He was particularly good on the over 25s night. Which I hate that name. That we used to call it, it Grabber Granny I Night. Know, the Grabber Granny Night. I yeah. hate that. And, and also, but, you were you were known for a certain section, a certain section, weren't you? <laughs> you're oh, Rags. Say it, aren't you? I'm going. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, I can't say. It. I want you to say it because it was your thing at Rags, wasn't it? It was, and I'm I'm known more for this jingle than I am for playing good music. Funnily enough, <laughs> so oh. we used to do like a slow section. I came up with the idea of calling it the erection section. And it's stuck. And All I, DJs used to call it that. Yeah, and I got the guy from America, Bill Mitchell, I think did one of the adverts for the, probably the best lager in the world or something like that, Deep Voice. So I played it, Keith Connors, the erection section. And it just, in today's world, that would have been viral. And I was once walking through Camley Town and this guy came up to me, he said, you're the erection section, man, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Not, did I play good music? Uh, yeah. So I've got the jingle ready for the reunion on the September 30th. Uh, you're too late out there, everybody. We're sold out. <laughs> but we're, doing, we're going to do another one, so, you know, you'll be okay. We'll let you know. We'll let you know. We'll. Your yeah. tour dates. There you go. There's, you can have a little T-shirt with tour dates written on the back. When I was thinking of putting, having T-shirts made with a DeLorean sports car, as we called it, back to rags, you know, but we'll see. We'll see. See how we'll it see. goes. We'll see how it goes. Do you know what? It's been absolutely amazing talking to you. And you. We're, we're, we're going to be doing some more filming around here, so you guys will be able to see a lot more of Rags um, on this video. So uh, let's, um, let's, let's wrap up there, because I know that our, our camera, cameraman, lovely producer Jack there, he's, well he's, done, Jack. Ed, he's edging to just walk around and film. Okay. So off on. you go. Go on, go. Thanks go. so much. Go, go. Supergirl here and I am a super fan of SMJ Media Group. They provide support for local businesses, charities and events and of course create fun content for all of you. If you enjoy our content and would like to help support us, please go to buymeacoffee.com slash SMJ Media Group and buy us a coffee.